What's up everyone, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. First day, we're starting off the trip here at the Lodge Mahal. And excited for a fun week of meetup games. And we just touched down in Austin with our buddies, Kieran Klosterberg and Alex Wolfgang Poker. And I'm um, just trying to check out the sights and scenes of this place so far. This place is really packed and I'm looking forward to just a fun trip. This is gonna be the first video of the Lost Austin trip here at the Lodge. And the next video is gonna be a really big meetup game. Currently right now behind the scenes that there is a pretty big live stream going on with uh, Andrew, Brad, Doug Polk. But anyways, right now we're starting off the night at a 1-3 game. If a bigger game opens up or we're called on that list, I'll probably happy to hop into some bigger action. But for now, it's gonna be playing some 1-3. Match stack, still pretty big. Not your typical 1-3 as it always is here in Texas. But uh, we've got Rob, Wolfgang, our boy Casey, Bang! and uh, Alex. Into the 1-3 streets we go and not a typical 1-3 hand. One of the first hands that we play a 6 12, 24, and I am in the $50 straddle. That's right, quadruple straddle on board, and the button starts the action with a call of $50. The $12 straddler decides to go all in for $622 total, and onto me, I peel ace queen off suit. Wow, what a dream spot in this $50 straddle hand. All right, I guess I'm, I'm all in as well. Uh, the all in is only about 12 big blinds anyways so we're in here i jam the button folds and i show my hand and this player who jammed says it's way ahead right now we're going to a flop which comes ace high pretty nice but this player announces that she has a flush draw though so hoping to fade a diamond the turn is a brick river 10 of diamonds damn it she shows king four of diamonds. So starting off the one three session down $600, a nice warm welcome to Texas. But what's even more of a nice warm welcome is that shortly after this hand, commentator Skull Mike of the Lodge live stream comes over and asks if I wanted to play on stream. What they're playing on stream was what I was told to be a 1025 game. So we take a $500 loss in the one three street move on up to higher stakes playing on the lodge live stream let's get into it very quickly sitting down on stream i find out that it's not the typical 1025 because one of the first hands there is a hundred dollar straddle on board i start off with just under fifteen thousand in stack and i pick up queen 10 of hearts in the hijack so nice warm welcome to the table went from one three to pretty much 50 100 it seems I raise it up to $300 and we get Andrew Nimi to make the call on the button. DQ in the $100 straddle makes the call as well. So we are going three ways to a flop of queen eight, six rainbow. Action checks to me and here with top pair and a weak kicker, I decided to check this one because honestly, I just flew into Texas a couple hours ago and was not prepared to play a massive game like this against some really tough competition. Anyways, action checks through, and the turn is the jack of spades. DQ checks it over to me, and now improved to top pair and a gut shot straight draw, I decide to bet out $700. This entices Andrew to make the call, and DQ folds. So putting Andrew maybe on some sort of jack or worse queen, although that might be unlikely. Anyways, the river is the deuce of diamonds. It's a complete brick and doesn't change the board texture in the slightest. Thinking that Andrew's favored more towards showdown value, I bet out a pot-sized bet of 2300, but as you can see, Andrew doesn't have much and snap folds. So it's nice to win the first hand of this big game and session here. So it's a great start nonetheless. What would make the session go even better is by picking up aces. We're in the hijack, and once again, the $100 straddle is on. I raise it up to $300 and only get the straddler to make the call. So we're off to a flop of 8-6 deuce, two clubs. He checks it over to me, and with our overpair, a hand as strong as aces, we are starting off with a bet. I bet out $500 close to pots, and he calls for $500. Going to a turn, which now comes a 10 he checks it for a second time, and I think it can go either way with a check or bet, and obviously with our overpair, I'm definitely going to lean towards a bet, and again, sizing up here with a flush draw on board, I size to $1,200, and for $1,200, this player thinks about it for quite some time before making the call, so we've got action, the pot is brewing, we're off to a river, which is the Jack of Hearts. 
He checks for a third time and I think over this spot for a while. At the end of the day, this is really not a great board for aces. And on top of that, with just one pair, what else could we get called by? It seemed like if we were to bet any significant amount, we only get called by specifically Jack X of clubs. Missed the flush draw, but ended up binking top pair. And I don't really see any t real tens in this spot. I don't see an eight calling three streets with over cards above the eight. At the end of the day, I decided to make a pretty nitty check back, but in results wise, you can see this player just missed the flush draw and aces will win. I just thought this was a really tricky spot and would love to hear in the comments below how you guys would have played this hand because I was pretty unsure. Like I said, I just flew in from Texas and not super ready to play a big game, but happy to hop on stream, play with some YouTube fan favorites and obviously couldn't pass up this opportunity, but happy to take it down with aces. If you thought that the $100 straddle was a lot, well, this is a $100, $200 straddle hand. I pick up king queen of spades in the cutoff and raise it up to $600 because that's what you do when the $200 straddle is on board. Action folds around to DQ on the straddle and he calls blind. Okay, DQ's obviously here to gamble and I guess we're gonna see a flop. This could be a fun one and when the flop comes king high, I decide to bet out and he folds nothing as he whiffed the board. So not a whole lot here, but nice to pick up a couple hundred bucks and this will wrap up the stream, but the game is not over. So I pick up my phone and start vlogging like I normally would. With the game continued off stream, I pick up queen seven on the $50 straddle here. Action folds around to DQ to my right on the $25 straddle. He calls 50 and I check my option. So we're off to a flop, which looks pretty good with queen nine deuce, two clubs and diamond. He bets out $100 here, a pot sized bet. And with top pair, not the best kicker on board though. I'm definitely not folding. I make the call for 100 and see a turn, which comes the four of diamonds. Two flush draws on board now, and he fires again for 250. Same situation as on the flop, blind versus blind essentially, not going to be folding top pair no matter how bad it is. For 250, I flick it in and call again. The river is now the ace of clubs, and now he decides to slow down and check. Once he checks this ace, I seem pretty confident that my pair of queens is gonna be good here, and can I target worse like nines for value that could be sticky? I'm gonna take a shot at it and take a stab. I bet out $350 and unfortunately he does fold a nine. So, so far it's been smooth sailings in this bigger game. Not much going on, just winning a lot of pots, which is always nice. In the next hand, I pick up eight, seven of spades in the $50 straddle. Action starts where Andrew Nimi opens up the action to $175. Get the small blind, big blind to make the call, and for just 125 more with a fun suited connector hand to play, I make the call as well. We're off to a flop, which comes as what Andrew would call favorable in 773, two hearts. Pretty sick spot here playing 87, and even better, DQ decides to lead into the field for $375. Yeah. I'm not gonna go anywhere. I don't think raising makes a whole lot of sense. Don't want to blow DQ off of any bluffs that he may have. So I make the call and surprisingly the small blind makes the call as well. So hopefully just trying to fade a heart. The turn is the queen of hearts. Ew, that's not it. Action checks to me and I'm actually in position now and there's a debate between a check or bet and definitely should be betting a lot of the time but I decided to mix it up with a check. Trying to have some strong hands here when I check back, and this one seems like a good candidate without a heart in hand. We're off to a river, which comes a five. For a second time, action checks all the way to me, and I'm trying to get value from just a pair of queens, I guess. Obviously, we lose to flushes, and I decide to throw out a pretty big bet of 2,000. Maybe you can get someone to not believe me and make the call, but unfortunately, both players reluctantly fold. And it's nice to, once again, just keep on piling chips away. Just smooth sailings right now, winning a lot of pots. And as if the session wasn't going as smooth already for me, I pick up aces again. We're under the gun and we're on the $25 straddle. There's a hijack open to $75 and the next person to act in the cutoff, you might have heard of him before. His name's Doug, Mr. Polk, something like that. He three bets to $275. 
oh boy, this is where dreams are made of in poker, right? Where you get to have a premium and four bet a legend in the game. I decide to size up with a bet of $800. It folds around to Doug and he makes the call. So we're playing heads up against him out of position. This is going to be fun. When the flop comes six, four, deuce, two diamonds, it's obviously a pretty good flop for me as it's Brick City. I don't know how great of a flop this is for my four betting range, but I decided to start off with a check. I don't know. Betting obviously seems standard. I decided to check in this spot and he bets out $600 for 600 bucks, obviously. With aces, um, I didn't check this flop to check raise, I don't think, so I'm just gonna make the call. We're off to a turn, which is an amazing deuce. Board pairs, I basically have the nuts in this four bet pot. I start with a check once again, and he decides to fire out 2,000. Again, with the ace of diamonds not afraid of flush draws happening here, I decide to just make the call and maybe check call river, check raise river. We'll see what happens and what develops. The river is the 10 of spades. And now I think there might be merit to donking here for value and leading out, but what probably makes the most sense is to just check. I'll be honest with you. I'm not entirely sure what the correct line is. Maybe he can bluff all three streets if he wanted to. Who knows? I check it, but he snap checks this one back. I show the aces and we are obviously good. So can I lose a hand tonight? At this point, it doesn't seem likely. For premiums, I pick up jacks now in the low jack. There's a DQ straddle to $115. So once again, playing some pretty high stakes. The Plymouth right calls the 115 and it's time to bump it up. I raise it up to $500, action folds around to DQ, and he's always in here to gamble, makes the call, and we're going to a flop of king, nine, six, two spades. He checks it over to me, and with the card over my pair, certainly could bet, but I decided to check this one back as DQ could certainly be happy to bluff with some holdings. The turn is the five of spades, not the most ideal card in the world, and even worse, DQ does oblige with a bet of $700. As played with jacks right now, I don't think I can fold. It'd be really nice to have a spade in my hand, but I don't. So end of the day, hoping to just brick out on the spades. The river is the queen of spades. Ah, that's pretty gross. Can't do much now with four to a flush out there. And he sizes up to around $1,400, I think. Not sure what it is because I ended up just snap folding as I'm never even going to think about calling that bet. And he shows us ace six of clubs for the bluff. Sick bluff by DQ. Gotta give credit where credit's due. Nice hand, man. Next, I look down at King Jack of Spades. We're on the $25 straddle. There's a plus two open to $100. Doug in the hijack three bets to 350. Then DQ makes the call for 350 in the small blind. And I didn't come here to fold or make the call with King Jack of Spades. I came here to battle it out and we're out of position and there's a lot of people interested in the pot. I four bet to $1,500 playing relatively deep, but Doug and DQ cover me by a bunch. Anyways, they both make the call. So we're going three ways in this four bet pot with what's considered probably a marginal hand. Anyways, the flop comes deuce three, four, two hearts and a spade. DQ checks it over to me, and I checked a strong hand when I had aces against Doug, so I'm going to have to check this one as it's pretty awful. With a whole lot of nothing in king high and some backdoor draws, I check. Doug now bets out $1,600, about a one-third sized bet. DQ calls for $1,600, and there's definitely merit to sometimes peeling priced in here, but... Just kidding. All right, I'm going to fold. It's king high. I'm out of here, but you got a really big pot brewing and let's just sweat out what happens. The turn comes the seven of diamonds and action goes check, check here. The river comes a four. So any ace makes the straight, but action once again goes check, check. DQ shows over the 10 deuce of spades and it wins. Why wouldn't it win? We're just living in DQ's life, it seems. Pretty big pot as Doug mucks, and obviously the pair of deuces beats King High for me, so no one had an ace in the spots. Pretty wild to scoop up this big of a pot with a pair of deuces. After that hand, we're rounding off the night, and we decided to do a whole round of PLO double board bomb pots. So this one, $50, eight ways. I pick up Queen 994 with two clubs. First flop comes Jack-9-8 Rainbow, so flopping middle set. 
Flop number two comes King King four to club. So have a pair and flush draw. Action checks to this cutoff player who bets out $300. And DQ makes the call and with a set and flush draw, playing for both boards, happy to make the call and hopefully improve. The turn on the first board comes the ace of clubs. Turn number two comes a deuce. So not really the turns I was looking for. And action once again checks over to the cutoff player who bets out $850. Once again, for 850 DQ calls, and now, knowing that I have the nut flush raw on the bottom board, I don't think I can fold now, although it is a paired board there. Still, we have a set and a flush draw. Can improve on both boards if we can get there. I make the call again for 850. We're off to the two rivers, which comes a jack and five. So improve to a full house, bricked out on the bottom though. Action once again checks the cutoff. I'm just praying to get the showdown, but nope. He bets out 1500 And even worse, facing this $1,500 bet, DQ raises to $6,800. All right, not really feeling great about my full house at all, and I'm only playing on one board where players could easily have me beat with either ace-jack or jack-eight. On top of that, there's also the cutoff player behind, so I just announce a fold. The cutoff makes the call, and we'll get to see what they got. DQ has jack-8 for a full house up top. Cutoff has king-deuce for a full house on the bottom, so I certainly would have been completely screwed. So anyways, my stack takes a pretty big hit in this PLO double board bomb pot, but moving on to the next one. After that hand, we play one more PLO double board bomb pot and this one gets fun. Still eight ways and $50 each, I pick up King King Jack eight double suited. So pretty nice holding to see. We're off to a flop, which comes King five, six rainbow. Second flop comes nine, seven, four. Top sets the nuts on the top and a gut shot straight draw on the bottom. Action checks to me and I decide to throw out a bet of $150 here. For 150, it was certainly a pot builder sizing. Three players make the call around, so we're going four ways to two turns. Turns come an ace followed by another ace. So no longer with the nuts of top set, but pretty unlikely to still be losing on the first flop here. Anyways, now my turn to again bloat up the pot as now I've improved to a flush draw on the bottom as well. I bet out $800 and only the player to my left makes the call. So playing to win on both boards would love to bink here. The rivers come a four on the top and 10 of diamonds on the bottom. So improved to the nuts and still have a set up top. We're at least going to be chopping this one if we're somehow beat. Anyways, I decide to pot it and bet large as I have a good opportunity to scoop and win both boards. I bet out $2,600. And facing this $2,600 bet, oh boy, he raises. Not a small raise though. He raises to $8,000 and this is pretty massive and significant. Like I said, I have the nuts on one board, so there's no need to be scared. We're at least going to be chopping this and it seems like we're gonna do so, but in the off chance that somehow that I am good, I wanna get more money in the middle and be able to free roll at the very least. I decided to jam the rest of my stack in. It's about $18,000. He covers me and for 18K, he snaps it off. So it's clear that he probably has the nuts on the top board. And indeed he does, he has eight, seven and we chop. So, so close to winning a massive pot as this one ballooned up to over $40,000. But sadly, it's just a chop and I only win a couple hundred bucks. So that's one way to end the session, but at the very least, I ended up on my first Texas high stakes live stream. Wrapping things up, last night was pretty crazy. Um, one, love the view from of, of downtown Austin here behind me, but last night was a lot of fun. Unfortunate that the PLO double board bomb pots didn't go my way, lost a few big ones there, but really cool to just randomly hop into the live stream. Expected to play some one three with the boys, but ended up hopping into a 2550 with the occasional 100, 200, 400 dollar straddle, who knows. But anyways, let's talk about the numbers. I was in the game for 14,500 out for 18,750. 
Solid start to the Austin trip so far here in Texas. A little bit of a switch. It's always nice to start off the trip with a win. And the next week, next few videos, you'll see a lot of stuff from here in Austin. Like the next video you'll see will be the biggest meetup game that Doug Polk, Andrew, and Brad will be running. So a lot of 2-5 games. Happy to capture the madness. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. A lot of bigger games to come. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Drop a like if you made it this far. Peace.